In the Northern Plains, we have a Pacific system originating from British Columbia, moving across Iowa and Minnesota. But down to the south, Tropical Storm Norma, which will actually become a factor in the southern U.S. early next week. Let's take a look at that surface map. Strong cold air advection working through the northern plains all the way down to Kansas and the Texas Panhandle. High wind warnings are in effect in the Rapid City area. You can see a gust right there, 45 knots. And that includes Sturgis, Wall, and the Black Hills for winds gusting up to 65 miles an hour. But those will subside rapidly later today as we lose heating and the gradient moves off to the southeast. And some of that wind working down into the Texas Panhandle as well. Winds have gusted up to 54 miles an hour at Dumas, located about right there, and 52 miles an hour at Pampa, those winds coming out of the north. In the northeastern U.S., some mild conditions. Temperatures up into the upper 50s all the way up into Maine. The National Weather Service in Caribou reporting a 148-day streak of lows 36 degrees and above, which is the longest on record there. So obviously they've not had their first freeze this winter. But some picturesque weather. This is a look at the fog in Maine this morning from some of the Department of Transportation cameras. A little further south around Philadelphia, they've had some weird cloud forms. Take a look at this. This is from the Weather Service at Mount Holly. That looks kind of like a tornado coming out of a optocumulus layer. What could be causing that? Well, that's actually smoke from a power plant rising up into a stratified layer. And we can look at some model data to kind of visualize that. This is the sounding this morning around Philadelphia, and you can see a strong inversion up there around 10,000 feet. The cloud layer located right there and just below it, steep lapse rates. So any of that smoke rising pretty much zips straight up, hits that layer of clouds and spreads out. And you can see those weak winds in the subcloud layer, so that smoke is not going to be ripped up, just going to go straight up. Heading down into the southeastern U.S., the whole area under the influence of this large ridge covering the east coast. So in that region there in the southeastern U.S., dew points a little bit low, 40s, and temperatures on the cool side. In the western Gulf Coast region, we're starting to get that warm air advection. Winds 10 to 15 knots coming right up there into the Ozarks, into southeastern Kansas, and ahead of this Pacific system, which is moving southeastward. And it does kind of resemble an Alberta clipper, but really it has an origin from British Columbia because we have a very strong polar front jet running about like that. So the systems are being carried from the Gulf of Alaska southeastward rather than from the lee side area of Alberta. And with a classic Alberta clipper, typically you're going to have a large anticyclone in that area right there. Anyway, just a quick look around the Quad Cities, some rain moving in, but earlier this morning, a beautiful sunrise. This is from the Quad Cities National Weather Service. In the southwestern U.S., a large Pacific high covering the Great Basin area. Temperatures really not that cold in the center of that high. Even though we have northerly flow around the periphery of that high, temperatures are quite warm in California. We have heat advisories in the interior coastal areas, including the Inland Empire near Los Angeles, looking for 99 degrees at Riverside, 98 at Ontario, 93 at Ramona, and 102 at Palm Springs. Heat advisories all the way up into San Francisco. They're looking for 86 today at San Francisco, which will tie the record for the date. That weather pattern due to this ridge extending right up through San Francisco towards Reno, 591 decameter high over Reno. Temperatures at 850 millibars running about 20 to 22 Celsius, which is around 70 degrees up there at 5,000 feet. All right, let's start moving up north, checking out the British Columbia region. They are under the influence of an atmospheric river. There it is coming from this occlusion offshore. 
and to the tail end of this other occlusion and into the Fraser River Valley and southward into the Canadian Rockies. And I'm going to start carrying these on these weather charts. You can see the AR, that's going to be the atmospheric river. IVT values about 250 to 300, so not really all that strong, but it's definitely having an influence on the weather. Further north, another occlusion. That's another segment of the atmospheric river. A few isolated 24-hour totals of about 3 inches around Prince Wales, but most stations around 1 inch. Some flood advisories popping up around Juneau. And then heading up north into Alaska itself. Yeah, this is a pattern change. Some Siberian air starting to work into Alaska. You can see that thermal trough right there, the very top of the screen with this concentric thickness pattern all around it. That's a new air mass flowing eastward into Alaska. You can see the winds there do have a westerly component. And behind this front, which is moving through the Northwest Territories, we're getting some blowing snow and snow as well in eastern Alaska in the interior. Some advisories for that wintry weather with some gusts up to about 30 miles an hour. And just to show you the significance of that, this is the pressure and thickness. That's going to be the frontal lows with the cold front extending pretty much right down there like that. And the center of the cold air mass up there northwest of Alaska. And you can see over the next 24 to 48 hours that cold air floods in. That's going to be the center of the air mass pretty much anchored right over Alaska for Friday. And then starting to move east into the Northwest Territories, kind of slingshotting like that into Nunavut. But some of it does start working southward into the Canadian Rockies. And there you can see right there, that's a surface ridge across the Canadian prairies that will start pushing cold air into the northern U.S. early next week. And back behind it, you can see a 10, 38 millibar high. And it pretty much anchors itself right over the Yukon, British Columbia region for much of next week. So we are heading into a cold pattern for parts of the western and northern U.S. In the Canadian High Arctic, yeah, temperatures are definitely coming down. We're now seeing minus 18. That's the coldest reading I've seen in Canada so far this season. So that is some bitterly cold air up to the north. But down to the south, temperatures hovering around freezing. So you don't have to go too far south until you get into the warmer air. And in fact, this is a little bit of a warm conveyor belt coming up from the south. Temperatures above freezing and we're getting rain as far north as Banks Island. So that's kind of surprising right there for so late in the year. Not much going on in Canada itself. Some lee side troughing in Alberta, a occlusion in Hudson Bay, and up there in Greenland, a very strong surface system battering the east coast with a warm conveyor belt. And speaking of conveyor belts, let's look at that atmospheric river. That's the current one, which is flooding into Vancouver. And over the next couple of days, it gradually subsides then we get into kind of a dry pattern for at least a few days. A closed system south of the Aleutians wrapping up moisture. Not really doing very much. And yeah, it's looking pretty good at least for a while. Maybe a small river coming into northern California in about one week. But in Mexico and the southern U.S., a different atmospheric river. Let's take a look. And there is Tropical Storm Norma, which is going to intensify into a Category 3 hurricane later tomorrow, and then start subsiding as it approaches Cabo San Lucas. Eventually, it's going to hit the mountains and spend a day or two traversing those mountains. But by the time we get into early next week, the moisture starts ramping up, partially from those remnants of Norma. And we look at some rather high IVT values getting into Tuesday and Wednesday, Areas of the Texas Cap Rock in western Oklahoma could get one to two inches. So that'll be something to watch going into next week. And that's a look at where Norma is now, 60 knots. So that's going to be a high-end tropical storm. And we're looking for that to move northward. And that's where it reaches that Category 3 status. Let's take a look at the Atlantic. And there we have Invest 94L drifting through the 
southern Atlantic expect it to develop, and that could be Tropical Storm Tammy. Let's take a look at the projected track on that. Looks like some risk in the Leeward Islands. That's going to be this system right there. Let's put that into motion. Looking at the GFS forecast, not looking for any aggressive development. Kind of grazing the Leeward Islands, most of the spaghetti plots of the different models run a little bit north of the islands. NHC putting all those islands right there in a risk for looking at maybe later Friday and Saturday, but rapid recurvature and that ridge up there in the East Coast region, that's going to completely block off that part of North America. So no chance of that making it into North America. So let's take a look at that forecast with the NAM. That's going to be this afternoon, looking at pressure and thickness. And the way we read this, uh, I'm going to give you the fronts. That's going to be the cold front kind of crossing over this ridge right there, so a little bit weaker through Oklahoma, then picking up strength again as we get into this troughiness in West Texas. And that's going to be the tail end right there. So basically this system up there in Minnesota and Wisconsin will continue moving slowly eastward into the Great Lakes with this wraparound moving with it. And the thermal troughing, you can see that right there. That's going to be the cold air coming around the backside of that low and not as much cold air going down into Texas. So into tonight, that's how things look. And then into tomorrow. So that's going to be tomorrow afternoon. Lots of rain through the Great Lakes area. Pressure gradients out west, fairly weak, and the tail end of that front pretty much dying out. Then we go into Friday. So when we return for the show, it's going to look like this. This system kind of falling apart, a new cold front moving south through the Dakotas, warm front like that. There's the occlusion. Most of the rain is probably going to be in Ohio, the bluegrass region, around Knoxville, and down towards Atlanta. And with this other coastal low right there, that's going to funnel up some moisture, get that onshore flow, and lots of rain from New York City down to Philadelphia and the Delmarva. Then for Saturday, things move up into New England. There's that coastal low wrap around into Maine, and they could get around one inch around Bangor to Caribou and as far west as Montreal. Then we've got this new Great Lakes system right there, and we start watching out in the northwestern U.S. because it will get active once again. That's going to be the end of the NAM run. That's about as far as I want to go, but things are going to get interesting going into next week out there in the northwestern U.S., and, of course, the remnants of Norma crossing the Sierra Madres at this time. And that's going to be it for this edition of Forecast Lab. I'm going to leave you with some footage of the annular eclipse here in Texas back on Saturday. This is how it looked from my perspective. And you're going to see Greg's drone footage as well. And Greg was at the center of that eclipse. So enjoy. And thanks very much to Paul Tukowski and Danny Schmiegel for the Patreon support. I do appreciate that. Okay, hope you have a great Wednesday and Thursday, and we'll see you back here on Friday for another edition of Forecast Lab. Take care. Bye-bye.